In these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In the Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Martin and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Hello, my friend. This is wonderful to be with you today. My name is Natalie Blackham. This is In the Last Days TV program. And we have a special guest again for you today. And this is Eliezer Ben Yehuda. You know him. We, we've done already some programs together. And again, he came to his home, Yerushalayim. And so he's with us. And we can do some special program. And we want to do it, funny enough, today on Yerushalayim, on Jerusalem. We want to tell you, first of all, please pray for our friend uh, Yehuda Glick. He's been uh, shot and he's in the intensive care right now. Uh, some lungs has been t uh, taken out and uh, they have to operate again on his stomach. He's stable, but he's still in very serious uh, condition. So please, when you're at home over there, just pray with us that everything will be fine, that he will be strong have a strong body and a strong soul who wants to live and we want to see him. He's doing some very special work, especially in Yerushalayim, in Jerusalem. So thank you for praying for him. And now, Eliezer, it's so wonderful to have you again. It's always a pleasure to be with you, you know. That's thank why whenever I come back home, I travel around the world mm -hmm. and uh, I try to enlighten people about the heritage of the Jewish people and about the heritage of my own grandfather mm -hmm. who is responsible for reviving the Hebrew language. And uh, when I come home to Jerusalem, I contact you and your dear husband mm -hmm. and I say, let's get together and let's enlighten people from Zion. Ki mitzion Torah. Udvar Hashem Yerushalayim, for out of Zion comes forth the teaching and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So it's a great place to be here. Yes, and it's so nice that we decided today to talk about Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem, which is my hometown, mm -hmm. because I was born here. Mm -hmm. But in a way, it's everybody's hometown. You know, the tradition in Judaism, and by extension, really, whatever is Judaism, everybody can have, mm -hmm. you see. So one of the uh, um, quotes that we use very often is that the Lord created the world mm -hmm. with nine measures of beauty. Eight he gave to Jerusalem and one to the whole world beyond Jerusalem. So, you know, when I grew up in Jerusalem, Jerusalem was a very small town. Now, today when I came here, and you actually have your uh, studio outside of uh, Jerusalem, in the hills, in a beautiful area, very high up in the mountains. Mm -hmm. And you can see all around you and be inspired. And today, when we came up here, you know, the, uh, the sky was bright but cloudy. Mm -hmm. And so we traveled up into the clouds, you see. Uh -huh. And when we finally got to the top of the mountain, we could see down into the valley and, uh, and we can see parts of the city of Jerusalem because Jerusalem has grown by leaps and bound uh, since Israel recovered the entire city. And it is wonderful to see, it is really wonderful to see the development of the city, to see the returning of the exiles, to see 
the new homes of Arab people, of people from all kinds of places around the world, uh, Christian people, uh, Jewish people, uh, and so on. So to come and see this, it's inspiring. Mm -hmm. And I thought that we ought to talk about Jerusalem. And we ought to talk about Jerusalem because it's very interesting to note that everybody's interested in Jerusalem and everybody thinks that they should be in charge of Jerusalem. And sometimes I think that that's not really what they're interested in. They're interested more in who should not be in charge of Jerusalem. And who is it that should not be in charge of Jerusalem? The ones who made Jerusalem a name. The fact of the matter is that the Christians, Jerusalem is important to them, but you know, Jesus came about 2,000 years ago. And yet, for the first 1,000 years of Christianity, no Christian wanted to be in Jerusalem. The only time they decided they need to be in Jerusalem is when they heard that Muslims are in Jerusalem. And when the Muslims came to Jerusalem, they came because they heard that the Jews were in Jerusalem. And so that is not a good enough reason. The reason to be in Jerusalem is because you want to be in Jerusalem. And that is something that happened a long time ago, maybe 5,000 years ago, with the Jebusites. Mm -hmm. So they built a small town there. The town was so insignificant that when Joshua conquered the land of Canaan, he just overpassed the Jebusite city mm -hmm. and he didn't bother to get in there. Why bother to fight another battle? You see, he said, let them die on the vine. You know, they're going to they're gonna shrink and shrivel and disappear. And then came King David. Mm -hmm. And King David said, I need to have a capital. And what can be my capital? David had a wonderful idea. He said, I can't take a city that is part of any particular tribe. So I need a district of the capital, D.C. Jerusalem, D.C. And so, no, D.C. is actually David's capital, you see. And so he said, this will be my capital because it's not part of any tribe. Because he was king for a while in Hebron. In Hebron, exactly. But Hebron was the capital of Judea, wasn't it? Correct, yes. And he was from Judea. So. He was a Judean, mm -hmm. but now he's king of all of Israel. Okay. So he needed this place for himself. And, uh, and so Jerusalem was captured and was made into the first capital. And then David decided that he's going to build a special shrine to the honor of God, the God who gave him the right to be king. And as you know, he said, the Lord said, no, you cannot do that because you have 
you have waged war. Mm -hmm. And he said, mm -hmm. your son will be a peaceful king and he will build the house. Which is interesting because his name Shlomo mm -hmm. comes from Shalom. Shalom. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, definitely. You see, that's the whole point. And again, he's like, when he had him as a baby, he had to choose the name. So it's interesting how God can prophetically give the right name for a child. It's yes, yes, this happens. In, in the Hebrew scriptures, this happens very often. Very, very often. So do you have the so, name, can you give us a bit like Yerushalayim? So, Yerushalayim, mm -hmm. actually, the, the meaning of it is a city of peace. Mm -hmm. Or in Hebrew, Ir Shalem. So it started out being Ir Shalem, and then the Ir became Yeru mm -hmm. Shalem. And there are a number of interpretations as to why it's Yerushalayim mm -hmm. and not Ir Shalem. Mm -hmm. And the most common is that the uh, prefix mm -hmm. Y at the beginning of the word with no vowels is the prefix of the future mm -hmm. from Yihye, mm -hmm. you see. And so, Yerushalayim is, will be seen in Jerusalem, you see, and it's part of the experience that dates back not only to David, but to Abraham, mm -hmm. that Abraham, in the offering of Isaac, he said, the Lord will be seen in Jerusalem. And that's where Yerushalayim comes from. Mm -hmm. You see, so yes, it's Yerushalayim, but it's also related to the place, Abraham. the place mm -hmm. where, where Abraham offered his son. It's the place where God prevented him mm -hmm. from slaughtering his son. And instead... He said to him, the Lord will be seen in Jerusalem. I will be seen here. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is that when uh, Solomon becomes king mm -hmm. and uh, he decides to build the temple and he becomes best friends with the king of Sidon, and they bring the ciders of Lebanon to build the, uh, uh, the, the, to, the to, to, the to line up the uh, walls of the temple, you know. Um, I saw some of them. <laughs> Do you know that? I saw some of the beams mm -hmm. in, on the Temple Mount. They are still there. They find some. And <coughs> unfortunately, it was in 2009, during the winter, some Arabs were burning them on the Temple Mount. You could smell, mm -hmm. because the cedar smell is like pine. Yeah. And the Temple Institute said, did you see what's happening? This has to stop. So, and there is still so remnant uh, next to the Gate of Mercy, or the, gold, the Golden Gate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... We can and when you see do the, the digging, history here. When you do the digging mm -hmm. in Temple Mount, you find the charred remains of the, of the, the uh, no, 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 of the uh, 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 cedars of Lebanon mm. that were burnt. You know, the, the Romans okay. burnt yes. the oh, whole okay. temple. Okay. Yes, yes. You see? Mm -hmm. And so in the earth, in the ground, there are the charcoal remains mm -hmm. of the cedars that were burnt and that, you know, left the mm -hmm. ashes there, mm -hmm. you know? It's very sad and uh, it's very interesting. And 
when people think about the temple, mm -hmm. of course, you know, they say, isn't it a shame that the temple was destroyed because that was the seat of honor of God? But it wasn't. It was, okay. It was, the pres it was the place more than the actual thing. Is it right? Yeah. You see, the, the, uh, the scriptures say, Uvanu li mikdash v'shachanti betocham. They shall build for me a sanctuary and I shall dwell where? In it. No. Oh, sorry. On it? In their midst. Oh, in their midst. Okay. I You're will right. dwell in their midst. Betocham. Mm -hmm. Not betocho. Not in it, but among them. So is the place, is not the thing with the more important, is the place who is the more important? Or not? What is more important is or not is the like, place, or is us. but it's us. Mm -hmm. You see, it's just like, it's the same with the priestly benediction. Mm -hmm. You know, God teaches Moses to teach, the, to teach Aaron and his sons mm -hmm. to give the three-part uh, 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 benediction, mm -hmm. you know. And it says, you tell Aaron and his sons to make this blessing. And then he gives the text. And so everybody says the text, you know, the Lord will bless you and keep you, da, 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 you know. But they don't read the text. They don't read exactly what it says. Because if you read the text, mm -hmm. it says, they shall pronounce this blessing, va'ani avarcham. They will pronounce that saying, mm -hmm. may the Lord bless you and keep you. And it's not, may the Lord bless you and keep you, by the way. It's, the Lord will bless you and keep you. You see, there's no may, there's no if. This is what they're going to say. You Do you see? have a may? But Do here you is, have a may in, in Hebrew? Or there is no Oh, may? yes, there is a may. There is. Yehi. Okay. Yehi or, let there be light. Mm -hmm. You see? But that is different. Very interesting. Well, Yeah. But the thing is, though, that it says, when they will pronounce that triple blessing, va'ani mm -hmm. avarchem, and I will bless them. In other words, the Lord will bless the people who are listening to the priests pronounce the priestly benediction. So again, it's the relationship with him, which is yes. the more important thing. Yes. It's not just because the saying. The thing is, you see, that Throughout history, mm -hmm. people have been reticent to relate directly to God. God is too awesome. He is too everything. You know, he's omniscient. He is omnipotent. He is omni, omni, omni. So what are you going to do? I mean, you know, it's like, if you stand in front of him, he is like a consuming fire. Mm -hmm. You can't stand. You're consumed. But he still won the thing is he still won that. That's right. Yeah. Very interesting. We spoke with a lot of I mean I see with my friends here, my real Jewish friends, mm -hmm. friends, friends, what they have is this this connection with God, this relationship with Him, mm -hmm. and to speak to Him and all of that. And sometimes Christians think that when is, you are born again, is only you who have that. But I can see around, it belongs to other people too. And it's important that we know Absolutely. that. And that Christians know that we have a lot, much more in common. Very interesting. Yes. And it's and good. People, people might feel good in Yerushalayim, in Jerusalem, because he's the place where he loves to be, and we can feel his presence. I heard some exactly. Africans who come here, and it's refreshing for us to say, we come here, we hear about the war and all of that, but you know what? 
we can feel his presence here, we forget about everything. <laughs> you know, every time I get ready to come back home, mm -hmm. some of my good friends, wherever I am, you know, whether I'm in France, whether I'm in the United States, they say to me, oh, you're going back to Israel? Don't, aren't you afraid? And I say, why should I be afraid? Well, you know, there's a, there's a war going on there. I say, when was there not a war going on there? True. You see? True. But yet, God told Abraham to go there. And God has made a covenant, which is a three-part covenant. Mm -hmm. It's between God and Abraham and the place. Mm -hmm. And it's very important. You cannot have that covenant without Zion, without Jerusalem. This may, is just the may, way it is. May many people hear it. May many people, Christian Jews, politicians, may they hear that. May they hear that. Indeed. It's so important. Indeed. And it is the truth. And, and the people who claim that the Jews don't belong in Jerusalem and that Jews, by the nature of the fact that it's only a religion, that they, they don't really deserve to have Jerusalem. Uh, it's a contradiction in terms. Mm -hmm. If the Jews are not in Jerusalem, then Jerusalem is orphaned. Mm -hmm. Which is also what Jesus was saying. I always wanted to gather them. And there is many passages in, uh, in the Old Testament when you see the longing of Jerusalem Absolutely. and his children. Because mm -hmm. Jerusalem, as, yeah, what you said, if Jerusalem is without the Jews, it's a city without, it's like a mother without his children. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. There is a passage also in the Bible, I don't know where, in Galatians there is, like she's the mother of a soul. Mm -hmm. Do you know a bit about that? Sure. Could you just give us a bit of <laughs> something about it? Because well, it's not... It starts, mm -hmm. it starts actually with Jeremiah mm -hmm. saying, a voice is heard in Ramah, mm -hmm. bitter weeping and crying. Mm -hmm. It is Rachel crying for her children. And then it goes on to say the most beautiful words, min'i kolech mi'bechi ve'enayich midim'a. So stop your uh, eyes from crying mm -hmm. and your uh, throat from, no, and, and, and uh, no, uh, prevent your throat from crying mm -hmm. and your tears and your eyes from tearing. Mm -hmm. That's the proper uh, order. Mm -hmm. And it says, because the sons will come back to their land. Veshavu banim ligvulam. And they came back, and they did come back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in 1967, mm -hmm. uh, a miracle happened because Israel, in 1948, 49, struggled to create itself, to be, to be reborn. Mm -hmm. And by the pressure of the nations, they stopped fighting and a ceasefire was imposed upon them. Interesting. You see? And they nothing, got, nothing they got cut changed. off. They got cut off from Bethlehem, mm -hmm. from the tomb of Rachel, you see? And here in 1967, they were reunited. The Temple Mount is and in our hands. The Temple Mount is in our hands, 
and Rachel's tomb is in our hands, mm -hmm. and, and the tomb, and the tomb of the fathers mm -hmm. in Hebron is in our hands. Mm -hmm. You see, so that was really an act of God in six days. Yes, which is amazing because we've just been in in a war of fifty days, very long, and not so much has been accomplished compared to the six days. Absolutely. I was I was thinking about that. I say. We've been 50, you know, 50 days is a long time. Mm -hmm. And I thought in six, six days, they took back so much territories. Yes. And I was yes. like, wow, this was really an act of God. Yes, it was kind of a recreation. Yeah. You know, six days of creation. This was six days of recreation. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there are very, very many Israelis who want to have a state of war. If it's a choice between having to stand guard or live in peace with a few fewer miles, mm -hmm. I know which way it goes. Oh, no, no, no. You see, this is what's happening in Jerusalem. Thank you, Eliezer, for what you are saying. We will carry on next week because the, the subject of Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, is just amazing. And please pray for the peace of Jerusalem. When we say pray, it's like seek the peace of Jerusalem. You ask God who is your God. You say, what can I do today for bringing more peace in Jerusalem? And we all have a role to play into that. So from me and from Eliezer, we're saying shalom to you and see you next week. Bye. And don't forget, we're living in the last days. You've been watching In the Last Days, a TV program with Martin and Natalie Blackham, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. If you would like to financially support the program or find out about conferences, meetings, or ministry products, then please contact us with the details on your screen. Visit our easy-to-use website at www.inthelastdays.com and register for our free e-newsletter Get the latest news from Israel, product information, online video teaching, or watch today's TV program at a time that's convenient to you. Thank you again, friends and partners, for making this program possible. See you same time, same station, for the next program from In The Last Days. And to be in Jerusalem. And that is something that happened a long time ago, maybe 5,000 years ago, with the Jebusites. Mm -hmm. So they built a small town there. The town was so insignificant that when Joshua conquered the land of Canaan, he just overpassed the Jebusite city and he didn't bother to get in there. Why bother to fight another battle? You see, he said, let them die on the vine. You know, they're going to they're gonna shrink and shrivel and disappear. And then came King David. And King David said, I need to have a capital. And what can be my capital? David had a wonderful idea. He said, I can't take a city that is part of any particular tribe. So I need a district of the capital. DC. Jerusalem, DC. And so, no, DC is actually David's capital. Mm -hmm. You see? And so he said, this will be my capital because it's not. Today, when I came here, and you actually have your uh, studio outside 
of uh, Jerusalem in the hills, in a beautiful area, very high up in the mountains. And you can see all around you and be inspired. And today when we came up here, you know, the, uh, the sky was bright but cloudy. And so we traveled up into the clouds, you see. And when we finally got to the top of the mountain, we could see down into the valley and, uh, and we can see parts of the city of Jerusalem because Jerusalem has grown by leaps and bounds uh, since Israel recovered the entire city. And it is wonderful to see, it is really wonderful to see the development of the city, to see the returning of the exiles, to see the new homes of Arab people, of people from all kinds of places around the world, uh, Christian people, uh, Jewish people, uh, and so on. So to come and see this, it's inspiring. Mm -hmm. And I thought that we ought to talk about Jerusalem. And we ought to talk about Jerusalem because it's very interesting to note that everybody is interested in Jerusalem. And everybody thinks that they should be in charge of Jerusalem. And sometimes I think that that's not really what they're interested in. They're interested more in who should not be in charge of Jerusalem. And who is it that should not be in charge of Jerusalem? The ones who made Jerusalem a name. The fact of the matter is that the Christians, Jerusalem is important to them, but you know, Jesus came about 2,000 years ago. And yet, for the first 1,000 years, of Christianity, no Christian wanted to be in Jerusalem. The only time they decided they need to be in Jerusalem is when they heard that Muslims are in Jerusalem. And when the Muslims came to Jerusalem, they came because they heard that the Jews were in Jerusalem. And so that is not a good enough reason. The reason to be in Jerusalem is because you want... In these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In the Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Martin and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Shalom, my friend. This is wonderful to be with you today. My name is Natalie Blackham. This is In the Last Days TV program. And we have a special guest again for you today. And this is Eliezer Ben Yehuda. You know him. We, we've done already some programs together. And again, he came to his home, Yerushalayim. And so he's with us. And we can do some special program. And we want to do it, funny enough, today on Yerushalayim, on Jerusalem. We want to tell you, first of all, please pray for our friend uh, Yehuda Glick. He's been uh, shot and he's in the intensive care right now. Uh, some lungs has been t uh, taken out and uh, they have to operate again on his stomach. He's stable, but he's still in very serious uh, condition. So please, when you're at home over there, just pray with us that everything will be fine, that he will be strong have a strong body and a strong soul who wants to live and we want to see him is doing some very special work, especially in Yerushalayim, in Jerusalem. 
So thank you for praying for him. And now Eliezer, it's so wonderful to have you again. It's always a pleasure to be with you, you know. That's thank why whenever I come back home, I travel around the world mm -hmm. and uh, I try to enlighten people about the heritage of the Jewish people and about the heritage of my own grandfather mm -hmm. who is responsible for reviving the Hebrew language. And uh, when I come home to Jerusalem, I contact you and your dear husband mm -hmm. and I say, let's get together and let's enlighten people from Zion. Ki mitzion tetzet Torah udvar Hashem mi Yerushalayim. For out of Zion comes forth the teaching and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So it's a great place to be here. Yes. And it's so nice that we decided today to talk about Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem, which is my hometown, mm -hmm. because I was born here. Mm -hmm. But in a way, it's everybody's hometown. You know, the tradition in Judaism, and by extension, really, whatever is Judaism, everybody can have, mm -hmm. you see. So one of the uh, um, quotes that we use very often is that the Lord created the world mm -hmm. with nine measures of beauty. Eight he gave to Jerusalem and one to the whole world beyond Jerusalem. So, you know, when I grew up in Jerusalem, Jerusalem was a very small town. Now, 